and it is time for you to put on your thinking cap and enter into a Mason's world. And uh, wake up. Jake Mason right here, always spelled with a Y, just to keep me separated from those other guys. Well, everyone is coming out that once was on Donald Trump's side, coming out and telling us all this negative stuff about him. And of course, they're broadcasting it 24-7 right here on CNN. And uh, we got another one, an ex-Playboy model, Karen McDougal. And she's uh, talking here to Anderson Pooper Scooper on Anderson 360. Right now only on 360, a conversation uh-huh. with former Playboy model Karen McDougal about the uh-huh. 10-month-long relationship she says she had with Donald Trump, a relationship she says that began in the summer of 2006. Ms. Uh-huh. McDougal is suing to void an agreement she signed shortly before the 2016 election with the company that owns the National Enquirer, which uh-huh. bought the rights to her story. Her lawsuit. Why would anybody want this story? Why? Why would you even sell it or... What's the purpose? All this Freemasonry crap behind this uh, Playboy, <clears throat> Boy Bunny. <clears throat> I think it is a Transformer in front of us. Only in a Mason's world. Suit says the magazine bought her story I don't know. Let to me kill see. it, thereby protecting eh. the candidacy of Donald Trump. Yeah. It's a story that's not been told in full on camera until tonight. And as you know, mm. Karen McDougal is just one of three women speaking out just this week about the Donald Trump they say they knew. If we could just start at the beginning, how did you meet Donald Trump? Uh, I met him. Uh, I was having my teeth cleaned and uh, I was at the dentist. And uh, uh, he was there too. And uh, well, let's see. I met Donald when they were filming the Celebrity Apprentice oh. at the Playboy Mansion. They filming. were filming there, and I was hired as one of the playmates to work at the pool party scene. It was quite fun, actually. And uh, you, we, you'd, you'd work for Playboy for some time. Yes, I. Uh-huh. After becoming Playmate of the Year, I was uh, required to work so many events with Playboy, uh-huh. and that was one of the events that I thought would be fun. And I worked it, and there were a lot of women there, and we just all had a great time, and that's where we met. How did you actually meet? <laughs> You know, he said hello, like he would to anybody, and then throughout the night, it was kind of obvious that there was an attraction from his part to me, and Uh I kind of just blew it off. Um, You could see him looking at you? Oh, I could see it, and the Playboy bunny, she's like the house mom is what we call her, she actually made a comment like, wow, this guy's really into you, and that's kind of when I started like paying attention, and he he was, and I I kind of smiled at it, thought it was kind of cute and funny, and then... She thought it was cute and funny. Boy, this one's got more makeup on it. Wow. At the end of the night, you know, after striking up many conversations. What would she look like without, or he looks like without all that makeup? Hmm? Remember, when you put makeup on your face at this level, you're hiding something. It's not really you. I want to see who you are underneath. And as Barry White would say, I want to see you in the raw. Uh, we, we exchanged phone. Uh, he actually asked me to write his phone, my phone number down for him to keep. Hey, yeah, did story, you, right? did you, you wanted to oh, see yes, Freemasonry for. I thought it would be nice to communicate with him and talk to him. I actually at that point didn't consider uh, dating or going out with him. But I Why? did think he's an interesting person. He's brilliant. And I like smart minds. And I think that I was interested in a communication for sure. So. Boy, ah, I was interested in the communication for sure. Wasn't he married or had a wife or something at that time? What are we doing here? This is all crazy. Come on, Andy. When was the next communication? Yeah. I believe we talked right away on the phone, and I think we talked right about a week on the phone right before away. his next visit to L.A., uh-huh. and that was his birthday, which I think mm. is June 12th. Oh, wow, June 12th. <laughs> June 12th. Oh, well, a little coding in there. Sorry. Would he, would he call you? He would call me. I would call him, vice versa. Uh-huh. So you yeah, had his yeah. phone number? I have many of his phone numbers, yes. I have many of his phone numbers. You have his a direct number for him, or did you have to go through somebody else? 
I have his direct phone number. I have quite a few of the direct phone numbers. I also had his uh, bodyguard case phone number. I had his uh -huh. personal secretary's phone number. Okay. That's uh, R uh, No, at the time it was Twee. I don't know her last name, but yeah. I just know her by Twee. But I have Why are you on TV telling this story? That's what you have to ask, folks. Why are they airing this? What is this doing to us and shaping our perception one way or the other? Huh? Because that's all it is. It is theater. Theater. Democrat, Republican. Mm -hmm. I have all these phone numbers, so if I couldn't reach him on one, depending on where he's going to be, I would call the other. When uh, he called, did his... She would probably blow his phone up, but I don't know. I really wasn't into him. What was it? Why are you blowing his phone up, calling him numbers? Numbers show up on the phone? No, it did not. It would show up as what? Gosh, it's been so long, but I think it just showed up as a 212. That's uh, it. A 212. Okay. And he didn't send it, save it under your contacts? Donald boy, it's calling me. Get out of here. Just 212. Or like a block number or a... What a dumb question. They communicated, obviously, he was in the favorites, or you know what I mean, in the contacts. How stupid. No, no caller ID. Right, correct. And, and what were the conversations like? Uh-oh. The conversations yeah. were like any other conversation you have with a, like a nice person. We got along. A nice person. What? A nice person. Why are you calling him all the time? Is he a nice person? Is that why? Huh? He's a nice person. Great. We had respect for each other. We had fun. We were funny together. We had a good time. That um, sounds like a match. Mm. We would talk about anything and everything from what kind of food do you like to how's your family. He asked me how my family was to politics to anything like just normal everyday life conversations. When did All right. You believe this? Hmm? You believe this? I hope not. It's all theater. <laughs> it's all a bunch of crap. It's perfect garbage. To see, him again. see him again. See him. So now she's dating. See him again. Before you mean after the June twelfth? Uh, yeah, after. Yeah, after yeah, the yeah. After yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. phone con conversation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. After our first meeting on June twelfth, I decided to see him again. Um, actually, that night I didn't think I was going to see him again because I was a little bit put off. But wait, I'm sorry. Was the June twelfth the 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 the, part, the apprentice event? No, that was our first quote unquote date. Okay, so I'm yeah. sorry. So tell me about your first date. date. Our first date. Whoa, 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 I was told we were going to. Let's know all the hypocrisy in the stupid story. Now it's a date. I oh, wasn't interested. I, I, he's a nice person. That's why I'm calling him. Now she's dating him. Folks, you got to listen to this crap. And not, you have to listen to it with the critical mind of, are they trying to fool me here? That's what I'm trying to say. To go to the Beverly Hills Hotel for dinner. Ooh, so yeah, he had babe. told me that Keith, his bodyguard, was going to pick me up at All a certain right. time, and he did. Ooh, yeah. And then we were driving over to Ooh. the Beverly Hills Hotel, uh -huh. and Keith drove around to the back, Ooh. and he said, we have to get out here yeah. because we don't want to walk through the hotel. In the back? And at that minute, I'm like thinking to myself, are we going to a room? Because I thought we were having dinner at the Beverly Hills Hotel. In the actual uh -huh. restaurant. Uh -huh. Right. Well, we did have dinner at the Beverly Hills Hotel, but in his bungalow instead. Uh, we had dinner there for a few Well, wait a minute. Why did you skip that one? And you went right to that other story. Thank you, Anderson. You just cued her. A few hours. Uh, we talked for a few hours. We had a great time. Caught her. To know each other. Um, we're talking about his birthday. And then as, as the night ended, we... We uh, were intimate. We're intimate. Now, remember, that can mean anything, right? That can mean anything. It varies depending on a person. Intimate. She used that word for a reason here. When you got to the Beverly Hills Hotel and, and Keith said, we're not going to go through the lobby, we're going to go. Uh -oh. Was it to a, to a, a, a room? A shady Hills basement. Or a, a, a suite uh. or... It was a bungalow in back. A bungalow. Oh. It's the one he said he always stayed at. And in fact, uh -huh. every time that I met him there, it was the same exact bungalow. And uh, Wow. <laughs> what did she just say? 
Each and every time, same time. So you did it more, okay. Uh, he, he's called it the nicest bungalow they had, so Ooh. I guess that's why he chose that oh, one. Baby. But um, that's, yeah, that's where we went every uh -huh. time. Were you concerned when you realized you're not gonna go out to dinner, you're actually gonna be eating in the bungalow? I think that first night I was concerned because I didn't, I wasn't expecting to go to a hotel room or a bungalow, whatever you wanna call it. What did you expect? Huh? Call it. I actually thought we were going to dinner, so I was a bit concerned. And I think at that moment is when I realized maybe something else is going on. I, you know, I'm a smart. Oh, yeah, you're smart. Did you bring this up to him? Were you assertive? Or did you just go along with the plan? Huh? I'm sure you brought something up and you said something. And there were people that were there witnessing it. Like so, uh, Secret Service and all them cats, right? Huh? Now listen. Smart girl. I, I probably could have figured it out, but I really wasn't thinking. I think I was mm. so nervous to actually meet with him in general that it kind of just didn't even, you know, think. It wasn't in my thought process. Then you don't go out with him until your ass is ready. Oh, yeah. Go in to get into a relationship with a bunch of fear. That's a great idea. That moment, I was just too nervous to actually meet him. So Were you attracted to him? I was attracted to him, yeah. He's, he's a he's a nice, nice guy. man, and, you know, I liked his charisma. I think I love, you know, good, great posture. He's got great posture. And posture. He was How about character? Does that count? Huh? He's posture. Just reading the script. Nice. So the, the sex stupid. was consensual? It was consensual, clear. yes. Ooh. And why would anybody get on national TV with this clown? And talk about their sex life. It's all part of the theater. It's to get you hating Donald Trump. Now, of course, <clears throat> Donald Trump is just a character as well as Biden. It's theater. It's playing you against each other psychologically. That's all these channels do. Let's go. What happened afterward? Uh-oh. After that mm. night? Uh -huh. You said it you sort of ended on a, a strange note. So <clears throat> what, what happened after uh -oh. you had been intimate? See how they do this? He has to prompt her with a question. That's what goes on here. He prompts her, and then she looks at her script as she's doing right there. Look at her eyes. And then she responds. Listen. Well... Looking at the After screen. we had been intimate, he, he tried to pay me. What? And I actually didn't know how to take that. Did he actually try to hand you money? He did. He did. And I said, I mean, I just had this look of, I don't know, just, I don't even know how to describe it. The look in my face must have been so sad because I had never. You didn't run out of there. You didn't feel taken advantage of. You didn't report it to the police. Huh? What did you do? I offered money like that before, number one, but number two. So what does that mean when he offers you money? It means he doesn't really want to be with you? You're a prostitute? Is that what you're insinuating? So I thought, does he think that I'm in this for money or why I'm here tonight? Or is this a normal thing? I didn't. Maybe you should have taken your time and got to know him a little bit on them there phone calls. Huh? Look at this crap. No, but I looked at him and I said, that's not me. I'm not that kind of girl. Uh -huh. And he said, oh, mm. and he said, you're really special. And I was like, thank you. So I left. I actually what? got into the car uh, for Keith to take me home. And I why, why would he pay you money and say you're special? And he's got an ego, so he already knows he has it. If it's real, I'm saying if it were real, the story were real. He's already got it. He, he's got an ego. That's his character. Right? Why would he pay you? Bunch of dumb crap. And I started crying. I was really sad. And it really hurt me. But I went back. But hurt you that. Why did you go back? You already saw something wrong with a man's character. And you didn't think. Why did you go back? He saw you in that way. Yes, it hurt me that he saw me in that light. And he obviously assumed that that's the kind of girl I was. Why? Maybe because I was a playmate. I don't know, but. 
Even though you'd had a night of conversation and days of playmates are not prostitutes. <clears throat> okay, different thing. True. Matter of fact, all of them. <laughs> in case you don't know, in the Mason's world, all of those are men in drag. Conversation. Mm -hmm. It hurt you that it boiled down in the end to that. It did hurt me. It did hurt me. I was crying in the back seat of the car. Like he does a terrible job. You know, I'm a professional who deals with relationships and people all the time. This is the worst interview I've ever seen or heard. And all he does is prompt her. That's what happens. And then that tells her where to move in the script. That's how this works. It's all theater in the Mason's world. Like I said, I got home and into my apartment and I, I, I cried for a lot. I felt really terrible about myself, let alone what he felt, but I felt terrible about myself. And Were you traumatized? Just say that. Did you go to a therapist? Did you get any help? Did you tell to a friend? All this guilt and shame. Why would you think that? Why would you take on those feelings? You declined, didn't you? You did the right thing. No, it's all a friggin' story. Rap. You know, I got over it. I got I over heard. it. Did you think you would see him again? I didn't. I didn't think I'd see him again, but then when he called, you know, I was at a bad place in life. I just came out of a bad relationship where I never felt good enough in my relationship. So you're getting in this one, thinking that's going to do you something good. Get out of here. That's a problem with relationships nowadays. Oh, boy. Truth and plain sight here on more than one level in a Mason's world. Let's go. And not that that's any excuse, it's not. But Your I rebounds. think I was so down on myself that when he called, and he's so sweet, like what everyone sees on TV, I didn't see in that. Now he's so sweet again. Wow. What did you think about him when he offered you that money? Huh? What did you assume about his character? What? Hmm? Was he a good man or a bad man? Did you think that that was a good behavior or a bad behavior? If he had a brain, you would assume that the motives were not good if, it, you know, if this were real. But no, she says he's sweet and all this great stuff. He's so nice. That's why I like him. Man, because that man was very sweet, very uh -huh, respectful, yeah. very loving, very kind and caring. Like that's the That was respectful? That was respectful? Offering to pay you money? Or sex. That's respectful. And it hurt you? Hmm. I don't know here. Yeah, let's go. Come on. The man I saw. Mm. He, he's very, he can be very charming in person. He's very charming. Oh, yeah. He's very sweet. His personality to me mm. was, wow. Like, wow. I loved it. It was great. Love it. When, do, when was the next time you saw him? Uh, it sounds like in the beginning she was taking all, you know, what did they call that? He had a love Jones going on. But she was in denial in the beginning of her interview. Uh, just maybe he was a nice person. What is this? Um, oh. You know, I'd have to look back at my, my I took a journal back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, and not just for anything in particular, but I, to this day, I still write down everything I do during the day. That's what I do. Uh -huh. So if I looked at that, I could find out. But I think it was in that same couple of days within a week because he was in town. When he came to L.A., he was usually there between three, six, seven, between three, five, six, seven days. And I usually saw him. Oh, you gave us the, the journal that you kept. You would write down on days you saw him. You, would, you, do, you wouldn't write out his full name. No, I either call them T or DT because if anyone... Why wasn't he in your contacts then as T or T, DDT or whatever the hell it is? Or if you met him at a dentist office, it'd be DDS, right? You can code it. Just kidding, I made that up. Oh, crap. Found this, I wouldn't want to expose myself or expose him. So there's a number <laughs> of, of days here. Come on. Uh, it looks like dozens over the course of time. What is this? With those small little DT. And sometimes they're hard to see. 
I purposely kind of chicken scratched a lot on there because I know what I'm writing. And like I said, to this day, I still do that with my notes and where, I've, where I'm at, who I talk to, whatever. Um, I did, uh. I did write that down. So did I see him quite a few times, quite a bit? Absolutely. We spent a lot of time together. Then why? <laughs> the story just makes no sense. So you were offended. You went home. You cried. It was traumatic for you. And you kept seeing him again and again. Let's see what Anderson does to prompt her here. And did you tell friends about it at the time? I did. I told a few friends. Uh, I told my sister. I actually told my mother that I knew him and we talked on a regular basis, but I told her that we were just friends and she kind of scolded me a little bit like, I hope it's only friends because you know he's married and I'm like, yes, I understand. Yeah, just as I thought. So what are you promoting here? Huh? Now he's a cheater. Damn. Mm. See, all of this stuff is meant to shape your perception one way or the other. In this case, negatively. Of course, at the end of the day, none of them make any of the decisions and none of them rule anything in this country. It's a show. And you're watching a gigantic production in front of you. It's all TV. Trump? The only reason you know Donald Trump is nobody knows him personally. And if they do, you know, it, it's far and few. The only reason the masses know him is because he was on TV all those years. Back in the 80s, 70s, late 70s, 80s, Donald Trump, Donald Trump. And reality shows and all that. That's the only reason you know him. That's it. And then this one coming out. Defaming him now. Don't like him. It's all for a big agenda. I understand. Um, my sister actually heard him on the phone. Uh -huh. She was with me one time and she, you know, I couldn't hold the phone because I was busy. So she put him on speaker and we were just talking. I mean, I didn't care. It's like she knew anyway. So when you what? have a relationship with somebody, you don't now hide it. Now it's a relationship. Right? Oh, God. If there's feelings, you don't hide that relationship. Did he ever ask you to hide it? No, he didn't. Never. So, so there was never no. a conversation of don't Never. Tell In fact, I think once he asked, um, does your sister know? And I said, yeah, she knows. He's like, oh. Knows what? What does she know? Oh, God. So he, he wasn't afraid to hide it at all. And you knew he was married. <laughs> I did. And what does that say about you? Oh, you're worried about money. But it never crossed your mind that he may be looking for sex and you pursued it. That didn't bother you? Oh, he's married. Eh, I ain't worried about that. Come on, man. What's going on with this lady's eyelids? Am I seeing this thought? What is that? That's weird, folks. Real weird. Did he bring up his wife? Uh, Did you bring it up? No, I, Why not? I never brought up his wife. He Why not? Once, and that's the only time I can remember when he said she was an intelligent woman. She knew, like, I don't know, four or five languages. But other than that, he never talked about his wife. And I never brought her up. I, obviously, Why? the reason I don't bring her up because I felt guilty about it. So I... Now you feel guilty about it. God, she's all over the place emotionally, isn't she? Hmm. Guilty. And then she's feeling embarrassed and all that stuff because he offered her money. Confused. Man, I would stay away from this one if I... Mm. After wow. I've never seen her until the one occasion. I never correlated the two, really. I just kind of out of sight, out of mind. When you met, it was 2006. Correct. Was this shortly after uh, his son had been born? Yeah, it was. Wow. Would he, would he talk about his child? His son? No. The only thing he said about his son was... Look at this script. Um, isn't the name Baron a nice name? And I said, yeah, it is. And I said, how did you choose that name? And he told me. And that's it. There's no comment. I'm going to tell you something. If this, is, if this were real, I wouldn't take anything out of this one's mouth either because she's, she's cheating. Her character isn't there. I'm sorry. 
I mean, I know it's a show and she's, you know, I know that. But if it were real, why would you do that? Huh? Conversation. As you enter a relationship, obviously in any relationship, you start to think about where this is going to go and how you prompting. feel. And how did you view it? How did you view the relationship? Uh-oh. Mm. You know, going through it, when going I look back it. where I was back then, I know it's wrong. Like, I'm really sorry for that. I, I know it's a wrong thing sure. to do. Sure, right, right, right. Look at that script. But back in those days, sorry. No tears coming out of her eye duct. Uh, none. Back in that day, I was, I was a different girl. I, no you know, tears. I, I was in the Playboy scene. Um, I was just enjoying life as much as I could. No tears. And, you know, when I got with him, I actually, you know, there was a there was a real relationship there. There was real, there were real feelings between the two of us, not just myself, not just him. There was a real relationship there, and I kind of uh, what the hell? Not between me, not between him. Let me go back. Can I go back? Let me see. Just want to see what she says here. You know, I had fun. I was in the Playboy scene. Mm -hmm. um, no tears. I was just enjoying life as much as I could. All right, let's hear. And, you know, when I got with him, I actually, you know, there was a, there was a real relationship there. There, was real, uh -huh. there were real feelings between the two of us, not just uh, myself. The, between the two of us, not just myself. Not just him. There was a real relationship there. And What did that mean? Not, God, just reading the script. That's all it is, folks. I kind of out of sight, out of mind with everything else. And, you know, in deep inside, I did have a lot of guilt. Mm. But mm. I, I still continued. Do yeah. you believe, though, that he had real um, feelings for you? Of course he did. Mm -hmm. How do you know? He would say that. How do you know? He offered to pay you money. How do you know? Did you ever talk about it? No. There are them funky. Am I seeing this? Look at this. What? He did. Were you in love with him? I was, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. God. And do you think he was in love with you? He was, yeah. How do you know this? Did he tell you? You know, I dated somebody who looked kind of like this, with these big old eyes like this, and she was just kind of ruthless, too. Did Donald Trump ever say this. to you that he loved you? Uh-oh. All the time. He always told me he loved me. Oh, now he said, wait a minute. This story gets more and more ridiculous as it goes on. Now he's saying... He loves her. Mm. Now, remember what she said in the beginning. Remember? Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. Did he have any nicknames for you? Uh-oh. <laughs> Bunny. He would call me Baby. Baby. He'd call me Beautiful Karen. Would you always see him in Los Karen. Angeles? No. No, I wouldn't. Um, I actually went to a golf tournament with him in uh, Lake Tahoe. Uh-huh. I went to his golf course in in California, I went to his, Read the script. his of course, home in New Jersey. I went to his home in New York. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. look at her eyes. Um, I, I can't recall She's right now. Yeah. Look at her eyes. When you say you would arrange to, to go someplace, how would it be arranged? Uh, I would pay for the flight. I would book it myself. I would book the hotel room if I wasn't staying with him. Usually I stayed with him, but there's been a couple times where I didn't. Wow. And then he would reimburse me. So if, I, if the flight was... So he's paying again. <laughs> ah, man, this is something else. All right, let's go on just a little bit further before we break. Let's go. I don't know. Let's just throw out a number. Mm -hmm. If the flight was five hundred dollars, he'd give me five hundred dollars and say, "Here's, you know, take care of the the flight and things like that." So. Uh, why would he have you book all the the travel? Yeah, and why? The He's shady, huh? Well, there's no paper trail. Uh -huh. And is it, did you realize that at the time? Yes, I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because he was. Then why are you? Oh God! All of this is just meant to psychologically maneuver folks in their perception. That's all it is. Oh, I, I knew Donald Trump. He's a scoundrel. Well, he's this. He's that. I hate Donald Trump. That's CNN.
That's their role. And then the other channels would never have this chick on talking this garbage. Never. Because it goes against their narrative. Freemason style. Concerned about it being revealed at some point and there being a paper trail. Oh, I was told there's, there's no paper trail. Paper trail. I can't say what his reasons were, but I, I would assume that's the case, yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Keith Chiller, was he very much involved in this? Keith Chiller. Up, sending messages back and forth, things like that? I did have a lot of correspondences with Keith. Um, Yes, and I got to know Keith pretty well. Like, uh -huh. he would always pick me up, drop me off, take uh -huh. me to and from, uh -huh. whether it's an event, whether it's the Beverly Hills yeah. Hotel or wherever we're going. Mm -hmm. um, Keith was always involved. Keith, Keith is a nice man. Yeah, I got to know him. He's funny. You went to the, you said you went to a, uh, a golf tournament in Tahoe. I did. There are other uh, women now who have come forward saying that they. Ah, here it is. This is how they pull it all together. I wanted to get to this point. Listen to this. Other women are coming out now with the same accusation. And then he's going to ask her, did he do that to you? And then watch her response. Uh, also uh, had met with him uh, and had sex with him uh, at, at that event. Were you aware of any other women? No, I was not. I mean, I was with them a lot, so I didn't see anything, but... Could he have stayed a day longer than me? Sure. Maybe it was his double. You know, there's a lot of Donald Trumps out there, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> it's part of the fakery. Did you think that this relationship was going to last for a long time? Did you have it? I did. You did? Yeah. I, oh, my. I oh. Come on. This is so stupid. With all this, screen, she, she's not in a room with a couch and a friggin' face. It's green screen or in a studio. That's what that is. It's so stupid. I felt it was getting much stronger. Um, you know, there were no gifts ever. What were you getting stronger for? That sounds like that old Chicago song. Getting stronger. Oh, is that Rocky? But a Christmas know. gift, um, I got him a gift, and then he yeah. told me the gift he got me was an apartment in New York, but it's Ooh. being remodeled right now. And uh. I never saw the apartment because I ended up breaking up or ending the relationship, but uh, <sighs> that was supposedly my gift. I don't know. You went to his actual apartment in Trump Tower? Uh -huh. I did. I didn't know I was going there. Um, oh, I actually had a hotel room in the city at that time. Well, Oh, God. Trump. Here what comes was it like another one. Trump Tower? Mm. I didn't know I was at Trump Tower. We went into the back entrance, so I had no idea where we were actually going. The back. What the hell is this back entrance, secretive back cave bullshit? What is this? You didn't know you were going there. How stupid is this? Entrance, as you know, probably is more discreet. It's like mm -hmm. a little nothing hallway versus like when you walk into the grand, right. right? So we went to the back entrance and then at that time I realized where we're going and I said, aren't you afraid to bring me here? And he's like, they won't say anything. And I'm like, okay. So we went upstairs and we looked around. Uh -huh. and then to we, his office or to his apartment? His bedroom. Apartment. He showed me around. Uh -huh. um, then we're going to the apartment. Oh. It's very yeah. gold. <laughs> no, actually, it's gold. actually quite pretty. The Wonder views why. are amazing. It's a beautiful apartment. Uh, they have great taste. Where was the wife and kids? Where were they at? Huh? Where were they at? Look at this crap. And he showed you around the apartment? He did. Yeah, he did. Did he reference Melania at that point? Uh. <laughs> Before the break, you... Oh, come on. Did you shut it off? Come on. They didn't even finish it. What good is this? Anderson? 360, three sixes. All right, I'm going to take a break. We're going to open up the uh, chat here in just a little bit. And uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments as well. Be right back. I'm Jake Mason, and this is Amazing's World.